Right, there we go. Recording now. Right. So, mm, arriving. Remind me where we met last. I think it's in Findhorn at one of the conferences, no? It could be the Global Eco Village Summit. Uh -huh. If you were there, to it, to, I've always been in Finhorn for one reason or the other because I was representing Africa on the Gen International Board. Yeah. And then the meetings and then the summits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we met in one of those occasions. Yeah. And did did you come to Atera, the Gen meeting in Spain a few years ago? It was my. Um, Administrator of Better World Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Yes, who was in Spain. Oh, okay, but you didn't come. Okay, no, I was I just wasn't sure whether you we'd met there as well. So you, I mean, your journey since we last met in person has been one of of having become a ref refugee. Because then, what I remember is you were with Sunita and you were still running the the permaculture training center that he had run in Cameroon for for many years and and built an eco village around, so maybe for for me and for people to to catch up with you like t can you tell the story of of um what happened and why you had to leave and and how you came to where you are now. Yes, what happened is. Um... Some people believe that it's a recolonization of Africa mm -hmm. because it's not only going on in Cameroon, it's going on in many countries right now. Um, but the situation in Cameroon started because for me becoming a refugee is because a war was declared on the English-speaking part of the Cameroons by the head of state of the country um, for historical reasons that in the six when independence was being prepared for the African colonies, this part where I come from wasn't a colony. It was a UN trust territory, um, similar to what is happening in the Congo today. Mm -hmm. So what is happening in, in, we choose to call ourselves, it was Southern Cameroons. So for reasons that the colony of Germany was to be split between the people who whose combined forces defeated the Germans in that territory, because the UN was just um, overseeing the war, or not really the, the Berlin Conference. Mm -hmm. So we cannot talk about situations in Africa without going back to the Berlin Conference, unless there is another Berlin. Mm -hmm. No one in Europe would understand what Africa is because it's just a farm of the colonialist that was redistributed. And for the war reparations, the richest part, because the Germans carved out the richest, the heart of Africa, that's where they planted themselves. So the UN had, the new body was going to need resources. So those territories that were retrieved from Germany are still the trouble spots in the zone in, in Africa today and because of their wealth. So I'm a victim of what is under our soil. But it's a bit, uh, it's good to say when? this because nobody else has said it, mm -hmm. that those UN trust territories that were supposed to pay reparation so we can have our skyscrapers in New York and the World Trade Center that went on, and the oil wells that are reserved for the future. Yeah, I grew up knowing this because of my situation. My father was in parliament mm -hmm. and I used to listen to the stories while I was young. 
So I haven't heard this. There is not written anywhere that the so-called plebiscite that was um, conducted supposedly under the aegis of the UN were actually a trade deal between the Gaul and the Queen of England because we became a troubled colony. What well, not a colony, a troubled spot because the UN asked uh, you, the UK to prepare us for independence, just like they were preparing Nigeria. Because at that time, then after the war, we were being administered from Enugu as our parliament was Enugu mm -hmm. as part of Nigeria. It, but I need, I need to briefly st stop you because my own ignorance is still searching to anchor this historically. The, the Berlin conference. So it's it's I... it's it's critical that. We talk about you entrust territory and that we are part of the Congo reason, basin, which is important for restoration or for climate or for mm -hmm. anything, and also important for the stability of Africa. Mm -hmm. but so in, let me just yeah. briefly ask you a question. Um, it shows my, my historical ign ignorance on this. Um, I thought that. Germany started the, to colonialize relatively late and then after the First World War already lost uh, lost all its um, colonies. So the Berlin Conference you just mentioned, when when was that? It was after the Second World War. After That's the when Second? the UN was formed. Yeah, but but before that... Before that... It was the Berlin... Uh, there was uh, um, another... Um, how did you used to call it? Before the UN, there was another body, League of Nations. The League of Nations, yeah. But yes, that was uh, overseeing the, repart the uh, repartition of Africa. Okay. The UN but, came after the defeat of Germany in the Second World War. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that. But what, what, what I understand with regard to the um, German involvement in colonialism in, in Africa, I thought it was relatively brief and it already stopped after the First World War, when Germany w lost the First World War, I understood it lost the colonies. Were, were there, so was there a period between 1918 and end of Second World War where there was already this repetitioning going on and it was some kind of British um, protectorate or whatever they called it? What happened was well, the the Congo, the Congo was the history of Cameroon is quite complex. Yeah. For anybody who doesn't know, even know what is called Cameroon, look at me. Do I look like a crayfish? That's what it means. It's the Portuguese uh -huh. who first sailed around our coast and saw a lot of streams in uh -huh. our river, and rivers are important because everywhere was named after a river. Cameroon, Cameroon. Yeah. Cameroon. So they. It's called Oskameo, which means the the streams. You know, they didn't even look at it as people. So this is how Africa people have feel that they have a history of an understanding of a people who are named any kind of thing for any reason and arbitrary divided between con uh, conquerors and uh, colonizers and now multinationals and so it's complex mess that we can't really uh, unless you are interested in reality you will believe that you read history history is the burial ground of reality of what actually happened mm -hmm. That's because true. I happen to have grown up in this area and been connected with the philosophical vision of the people and the land and initiated into being a custodian of that culture, which also means of that history and of that philosophy of a people. So I just can tell from who I am, my own perspective. Mm -hmm. It's complex for me to even attempt to talk about the history and the political ramifications which has brought us to be called what Africa. Mm -hmm. What is Africa? Africa is, is what the colonialist label 
be it the King Leopold of Belgium who called his own, or the British, or the Germans, or the French. So if anybody wants to understand what is Africa, they cannot get it from the colonizer. They have to get it from the people, who they are. You can't tell me who I am. I think I know who I am better than anybody can define me. And why should people go around the world defining other people and subjugating their cultures and putting their own cultures and their own values? This is where we are. If we talk of regeneration and we don't look at history, mm -hmm. then it's just an aberration. Because Africa has become resilient because of restoring itself over and over and over for thousands and thousands of years. Mm. And to even make the uh, exclusion of Africa in decisions today, be it in whatever circles, I've tried to be in some of these circles and I've noticed that whatever we do as a people, the sun will always shine from Europe or from America mm -hmm. to, to us. And we have nothing to say about it. So all the, the so-called development paradigms were not designed with Africa included. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even pretending to be a voice of Africa because Africa is also this people of voiceless continent still under, after the Cold War, it's renamed the dark continent or sub-Saharan Africa just to hide something. So nobody should be interested in darkness. You know, you can't find anything there. Whereas the resources that have built most of the civilized world and are sustaining it are from, don't even talk about the culture, the music or everything. So it's difficult to be an African and to talk about Africa. We just don't talk and just listen because nobody is interested in hearing our story. Yeah, I would love to run something by you and, and have your honest reflection on it, just so because my sense is that to rediscover the, the depth of our history, no matter where we come from, is to understand that our species survival pattern, our long journey of becoming homo sapiens in that framing, which of course, which, which of course is also um, part of just one particular worldview to tell the story in that way. But for all that time, we have been expressions of place. We have been custodians of the ecosystems we dwelled in oftentimes in a more migratory way, sometimes in a settled way. But we in so so for every human being in our evolutionary past, no matter what we look like, is a long, long, long series of ancestors who understood that the world was kin, that by nourishing the larger context we emerged from, we nourish ourselves. And therefore we have that capability innate in us, no matter where we are. And also somewhere each place holds lineage, holds story, holds its entire becoming over time. And in some places, that knowledge has been completely eroded by the Romans 2000 years ago in Europe. Like the trauma and the perpetrated, the perpetrated again, because uh, those who have become perpetrated against becoming the perpetrators seems to be a pattern that runs through the last 5,000 years um, in particular. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm wondering whether in Europe, there's also this story of place. There's also this indigeneity because people have been expression of places in some cases for many, many generations and haven't moved. 
but the the law the story of place has maybe been lost and we had these 2000 years of war in europe which then also caused us to take war elsewhere does that kind of framing make sense to you is there anything in it where you say no from my perspective this is part of the colonializing story i just just would love you yeah you're right but how do we do with the de denial you are the first person daniel that i've heard actually saying that there was some ingenuity in Europe. Most of the people deny it. They say we lost or we didn't even have mm -hmm. what is called indigenous knowledge. And for me, indigenous is the base for sustainable development. Once we start with denial, and then how do we do with the supremacy when it comes to looking at just like I said, in this planet, in this whole universe, nothing is lost, nothing is created. So we have archaeology, we have even AI. We have, if we stop using the world's resources to barricade us from our opportunities, then we keep going round and round and doing the same thing and expecting different results. So until we have this change of mindset, which is why I based my work on the youth who are eager to know something different because I've come to understand that they can no longer trust in which they are thriving. And this is pretty dangerous for Europe and for North America. If I wasn't on this side of the world, I wouldn't exactly have these two pictures. So I'm no authority to say that we are deliberately pushing the youth to the brink mm -hmm. by not allowing them to find the truth themselves. They are in this trade jacket called education. Yes. So I have based uh, my work, I had direction in 2009, when the International Permaculture Convergence came to Africa for the first time, I just come back from the UK and my friends wanted me to go there for my own benefit. But because I had registered an NGO in 1996, saying that it is the young people who need to be empowered, who need to know about permaculture. So I, used the scholarship to send the youth who was the administrator before Sunita that you know mm -hmm. to Fambizanai. Fambizanai is important because the colonialists did one thing. They said, we don't need to destroy, destroy the African farming systems. Let's push it out of the appetite, keep it in Zimbabwe, in Fambizanai. So it can be there, you know, just put it there. We don't need to just destroy it. And for me, to have that center, which kept the farming systems even away from the interpretation of Bill Morrison was a great thing for Africa. But no one in Africa knows this until this girl came back, her name was Laura, and told me that I have to make a restitution to the young people of Better World Cameroon because I just discovered that what we were doing is better than what the Europeans are telling us. They are bringing us um, theory upon theory and asking us that this is the only way to do it. Whereas we grew up knowing that we have as the vegetable in the backyard, we throw the, and the medicines and so on. So how can we reconcile this? This is the debate that started before I decided that I wouldn't um, swallow wholesale the Western permaculture and then I, we agreed to coin something called permaculture, the African way. It started with this IPC, it was in Malawi. She did, in order to qualify, she had to go and do the EDE course in fact, in Germany. Mm -hmm. So to qualify to go to Malawi. And this was the beginning of my vision for Africa. So I started in the city with a community garden 
that brought all the theory, theoretical concepts of school uh, to a piece of land that was a landfill. I managed to buy it. I was working in government. I worked in government as, as information officer for social security for 22 years. Mm -hmm. So I toured the country and I knew the realities and that the worst was coming for this new system of education that was being enforced. So they were coming to this space to run away from prostitution, from crime, to find a different pathway for those who wanted to do it. Because after the so-called independence, there was no structures for survival. You are uprooted from a system because we live off the land and thrown into it. No one expects this. They don't know what it is. They're just shining talk about university and it's about teaching us about the French Revolution, the Great Lakes of America, and the grass is greener on the other side. And say, but come home. When they heard the African drum in the community garden, all the youth started coming from all over. And then we started having young people from SOAS, uh, the School of Oriental and African Studies in London, mm -hmm. coming to uh, do a case study of this project. This is how it became international, just from the starting, because it was unheard of that young people decide to create their own pathways and start this cleaning the streets, cleaning the rivers, building the university landscape on their own with no support from government. Then the American embassy stepped in and said, well, now we've seen a case study. Now we can support, we give cash to you. You are doing good work. So just give cash to the young people. That's how the movement started. And today is grown into many institutions has done research into the indigenous systems that still that survived and how they could inform the development of Africa became the nursery for, you know, Sonita because Sonita was the person who managed the, the U, 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 embassy pro, uh, money. Mm -hmm. She was the administrator and now she, she, she brought this experience into the Gen Africa, the Global Ecovolution Network Africa. Mm -hmm. And she's now doing this in, in teaching permaculture in Europe. Mm -hmm. And this is just one of the Sunitas that yeah. you can imagine from 1996. But the sad story is that because it comes from Africa, it cannot be noticed and cannot be believed and cannot be trusted. So I came to then become um, because I resigned from government to devote myself to this movement. Mm -hmm. Because they asked me to transform my landscaping uh, company. It was called Royal Gardens. We were doing, it was the money was coming in for the first time. The building embassies, the building institutions. So there was no other person. We were considered professional gardeners. So I was making money at the time. That's how I had money to buy this landfill, uh, five acres of landfill, because landfill is a big resource. It's just huge compost and water mixed together with seeds from the rich people. You get everything from there. Mm -hmm. So the university started writing, newspapers were writing about this, this stuff, uh, flower mania in the capital. The rubbish heaps were being turned into flower gardens. So, but this was never to be because even though I, the NGO I created was to complement government action, the government wouldn't have it and they destroyed the community garden. Mm -hmm. So the king invited me and gave land in Bafut. Then the garden was upgraded into the eco village. That is the history. But the real history is the my initiation at the age of 13 into the elders council of the village where decisions are made. Because it is in the village, it is believed that if we make decisions, construct the village without getting the voice of the youth, they would 
tear it down just to feel its warmth because they are being excluded. Mm -hmm. They are needing to be. And because of my involvement with the Christians, very early, I was on the school teacher. Mm -hmm. And it was a different concept of teaching because in my village, I was a babysitter for the community. When the women are doing collective farming, there are some selected people who know how to deal with children and with mothers. So the mothers can leave their children in peace and do the farming for the whole day. And you know the needs of the child, why the child cries, when the child needs to eat, if the child pulls, what to do with all these many children. And so it was great experience for me. Having been initiated and understood from the mothers that you have to listen to the child and understand the needs because the children are the angels of the future. Mm -hmm. They stayed with me. And then my own mother, because I had to be taken out of school to be do this job in the village because there was no other person who could do it. And I was crying every day, carrying the baby, going to the farm, I'm meeting my, my peers, going to school, and I start crying. And my mom would say, don't you cry because source is earth. He who puts his hand in the soil can never suffer in this life, my son. Mm -hmm. I only realized that 30 years after what my mom was telling me. So this brought in instantly when I arrived the city to become a guide for young people and start initiating them through the rite of passage. And from my own responsibility in the elders council of being the ambassador of the culture wherever I go and to bring good points to improve the culture the kingdom of Bafud remains the strongest kingdom. The Germans tried to defeat them. They couldn't. The English couldn't. The French are now trying hard lessly and causing this genocide, which has moved me to Portugal. And the Echo Village burnt down. The Echo Village was a point of reference for me, and many have said that, for what is needed mm -hmm. for African development. Even though I'm not an intellectual and I'm not in politics, I am not. But the whole thing is just practically, Africa cannot develop without going back to its roots. Mm. And how? so how long was that period of being given the land that the, the eco-village was then built on until you had to leave? The magic happened in 2011. I went home to prospect uh, with the young people from the capital, the, the land. And in 2012, we got the charity port support mm -hmm. because we organized a community around the Better World Permaculture Cooperative called Better Cop mm -hmm. and chose something called high value agriculture products mm -hmm. to become generate the income for building the village because we build the village from the resources that were on the land mm -hmm. mud stones and grass roofs as we used to do and that brought in uh collaboration uh, the a german architect came in to help us with the designs for the women because yeah, we wanted it to look modern Cannot Minke or who was LK it? actually married a Canadian, but she grew up and studied in Germany. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So she came in, and that was the beginning of indigenous and modern working together. Mm -hmm. This is how my vision started to come together. Mm -hmm. In order, we cannot just go back and live the way our forefathers lived and just build houses that have a three fireside stone with smoke and, you know, we are modern. So we started by developing the Africa Kitchen Revolution, making a way that we can use very little wood because if, but cutting wood became a problem because 
before there were spiritual forests with the law of how what you touch, what you don't touch, you can only take the broken dry wood for burning. But with colonization, everything changed. So we used this concept, but improved it by bringing in new modern uh, tools. So one of the characteristics that proved to me that this was working was when the oldest grass roof in West Africa, which is the head of the shrine in Bafut, it had to be renewed. And because of the eco village, the eco village is the demonstration site of how the whole of the 54 villages in Bafut were going to we have a vision. So the vision was, don't do it the same way the old people did it for 500 years. Now we are going to bring in technology. Instead of just using the bamboo, mm -hmm. we'll use seasoned wood for structure and then put bamboo on the wood. Mm -hmm. So these are things that created uh, the secret society remains very powerful. These people had to be initiated into the secret society to be able to be accepted to go into the shrine and to be able to communion with indigenous and modern. This was the birthplace. Then from there, we started having experts, woofers, uh, people doing internship, researchers. And this was the beginning of how we started to see that there could be something called South-North development, not just North-South based on it, but South-North based on collaboration, based on uh, having an ethical base, based on, uh, well, Westerners choose to call it solidarity. But for us, it is the love-based response on how communities should function. But the Westerners tried to, well, the love is Valentine, oh, it's Christmas. They don't want to see us the way we want to see us. Because all this is also the responsibility for each other based on trust, team spirit. So the youth camps that were then the bring, brought in the modern concepts. What is climate change? Why is there no longer food sovereignty? They started to deal with the issues. Based on this, if you have an eco village or whatever people are calling, calling community, without value and being of service to each other, mm -hmm. if it's this competition and uh, personal interest based system of the West, it doesn't work. So that is how between 20, uh, 13 and 2015, the, we won the Gaia Trust uh, Excellence Award for the most inspiring project. But this is also another thing. The German foreign ministry said the first project on that cohort, because it was a thing of the UN decade of education, evaluating why the education is, standards are falling, but they never funded it. Why? They, they promised money and then didn't give it? Yes, because of the politics, for the reason that the UN organized a plebiscite, plebiscite to, trick, or to trick the people to put them under the French. So they said the People who ran away because my uncle, the king, was holding the house of chiefs and was going to Enugu. Now they want, they are ruling themselves. They termed us socialists that we were sympathetic to Patrice Lumumba and Kruma, and so nailed us. So they organized this play deceit between we and yes. The people are illiterate. They are voting and saying, we don't want this, we want this, but they have tricked them to say that we want to join the French. That's how they did it. So this kind of ways of doing things are still the structures on which Africa is being built today. So I'm a lone voice in the wilderness. I have tried to be in systems, I'm even in the UNDP system. I've been everywhere and I see that 
nothing can emerge or oh, it is believed intrinsically believed in the development paradigms that nothing good can come from africa we even wipe away the history that africa is maybe the cradle of society don't even go to egypt don't go to the buried history mm. have all the tools to unearth history because there's nothing that hides under the sun but we just we fully blind ourselves from looking in that direction because we want to be the only ones. Yeah, Europe will always shine the light into the rest of the world. That is the competition. That is the struggle. So when I begin to hear things today, like community in the West, I wonder what they are actually talking about. Mm. Community of separation, of exclusion. What's your experience of, I mean, you've, you've been in Western eco-villages and communities, like just on the human, so because just as much as you rightfully said, you can't really talk about an African situation. It's not like we're not all Europeans in the same way, or we're not all Germans or whatever in the same way. And, and having been in, in eco-village communities, how would you see the space? the spirit of community, the connection with life, the connection with land, the connection with um, letting life's regenerative impulse flow through us. Have you encountered communities in Europe where, where that is still alive or being practiced again? It's alive in a small scale. Mm -hmm because two things when you bring people together under an intention be it social housing or growing food or circular economy or whatever it's stakeholders instead of shareholders mm -hmm. and stakeholders paradigm is business as usual I don't even need, need to convince any European who has created a successful, I don't know what is success, if it's about making the business. Mm -hmm. So I've been in the permaculture networks and it's about selling certificates. Mm -hmm. My concept of permaculture, if it doesn't involve the socially excluded, if it's an elitish affair of making business as usual, well, it's an eco village and it's satisfying its vision. And for the people who constituted it, they are happy with it. But that's not what is going to restore community as oneness or a holistic way of doing projects. Mm. I have had that experience of, I had a good link with Tamara Eco Village mm -hmm. as the South uh, North experiment. I did the water landscapes management and I brought a local technology to the solar test fields. And I consider Tamara as the only one actually practicing something instead of just selling certificates. And let me give you the picture, Daniel. We invited to Spain, to Catalonia, um, on uh, Rosemary Monroe's mm -hmm. invitation mm -hmm. to design permaculture for Ukrainian refugees. Mm -hmm. Okay. We arrive, and of course, we are not refugees. Even though we are refugees, but they consider we are only good for helping the Ukrainians because Ukrainians are by law supposed to be helped in Europe. How do we feel as Africans? So these stories are not to be told because there is no space for telling them, be it in the Global Accomplish Network. Mm -hmm. I was part of the negotiation in second with Kosher and uh, Dr. Abulesh mm -hmm. of late. 
This was the creation between Global Ecovillage Network Europe and Africa. But it was always only good for using Africa to raise money because the, the, the Pan-African Ecovillage program that was, it remains a shadow of itself. Mm -hmm. So this is the relationship between Africa and Europe in matters of looking at what networks are. So the networking is for the benefit of Europe. Mm -hmm. I have tried within the UNDP to create South-South. We just finished a project of development from the ages around conscious food for conflict zone and disaster stricken areas. So there, this was Better World Cameroon, uh, the Ubuntu Center in um, Colombia and the green relief, green relief in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Ah, Sarah Keblatin. Yes. Huh? But it is still difficult for people to understand that there should be inter-dialogue before the continuing the north-south axis. People just can't, how do we tweak the people's minds? Mm -hmm. They don't see it. So these are the difficulties Sarah and Margarita and myself faced with the project. Mm -hmm. Because we said we cannot start talking about coll collaboration, the same aid structure, mm -hmm. one way traffic. Yeah. Because of these partitions, we cannot talk to each other. We need a visa. I need a visa to talk to my brother in Nigeria. In fact, the our uh, our tribe was split. Part is in Nigeria and part is in the so-called Cameroon. But we cannot cross the border. So how can we continue with this development of separation? Mm. And this is what we are struggling to do by saying, let even share our experiences in the global south. Mm. Because what portends is when a war breaks out, that area like Ambazonia today, the genocide is going on. It's declared a no-go zone. The government doesn't want anybody there and the world forgets. Mm -hmm. One day somebody will come, Rwanda is happening. The same amount of people that were killed in Rwanda, except now they decide nobody sees the bodies. They throw acid and put on mass graves and this, you won't find this anywhere on the internet. Don't even go look at Ambazonia in the internet because what they will tell you is the ex exactly the opposite of what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And everything about the burning of the Eco Village, about the UNESCO World Heritage Center going up in flames, is systematically removed from the internet. So what are we doing talking about collaboration? Mm -hmm. It can only be by my own standard as like-minded people who want to understand as friendship. That's why my new concept in Europe is creating these spaces of friendship for sharing stories in another way for people who have the mind and the ear to listen. Mm -hmm. And so before we go to the, this idea of the, 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 I mean, the land that potentially could be the home of the center you would like to build uh, i'm as you were speaking something that came up in my awareness a couple of times and i just wanted to voice it and hear your opinion about it in in north and south america there is a framing around the meeting of the eagle and the condor um the the meeting of um indigenous wisdoms and um wisdom carriers from Latin America, the, 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 the southern part of the Americas, um, and wisdom carriers from the northern part of um, the Americas. Again, calling it Americas is just <laughs> as dodgy as call, 
calling Africa Africa. It's it's like Amerigo Vespucci. It's it's it just yells colonialism. But but still that that notion of that as part of life's regenerative impulse flowing through us as living expressions of this planetary process that is life is the healing of our separateness through story like the stories and th the actions that the stories have created over the last 5000 years how how do you feel about this this like that in the context what what you're trying to do for me feels like a north south opportunity of meeting where can we still find indigeneity in Europe that, that can be involved in this, that isn't a, um, yeah, Hollywoodized playing, <laughs> pretending to be um, <laughs> indigenous. But, 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 but I, this, this, I think it, it just, with my inner sense of what kind of healing is needed, um, have you have you have you ever met anybody like being initiated into a wisdom carrying tradition? Have you ever met anybody in Europe that feels like they're carrying something similar out of an a European lineage? That is a different a, a difficult question, but I'll attempt it this way. Okay. Portugal, I'm not in Portugal by accident. I think it's by divine. When I sent SOS out to all the people who be in the Permaculture Convergence or Global Ecovillage Network, the only people who responded were Tamara. And they even went further. I came to Portugal because of my trauma of through the war and what I tried to do to save the young people. They tried to save my life. And I told them, I feel like a coward. Coming out of this trauma makes me just feel even worse than I was before the trauma. Mm. My only healing is when you can help the think tank that made me have a name in Africa, the young people who are struggling for their lives in the forest when the eco villages burned down. So they brought nine people from Port from Bafut to Portugal. So I'll even go for that. Just one brief second. Yeah. Where I'm sitting right now is different from the land where we were talking about. I'll just try to show you through the window. Nice. Do you see a sea out there? A uh, uh, little bit higher, a little bit higher. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I can see. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. This place is called Bugao. And they are trying to do the same thing that I did in Bafut to transition a village to resilience and to stop it being taken over by the hawks. Mm -hmm. Because all the coast of Portugal, Portugal is becoming the tourist destination of the world. Yeah. And the reason I'm here, there are two ladies outside there, Eddie Maria and uh, Emma from New York. We were meeting here today. I traveled three hours to the southwest here in Bugao because I have met people in Portugal since I arrived here. I have moved to four communities and created a niche within a community of farmers. Mm -hmm. Because within existing villages, there are still people who think like, and I showed you this sea because it is the Iberian Peninsula. The Iberia, there used to be an area between Africa, Spain, Portugal, mm -hmm. that was like a continent of its own. 
historically. Mm. And this is the place in the world that I see a lot is happening. Soon there will be the meeting of the tribes and so on. They are, what made me to decide two years ago that I'm not waiting for maybe when the war ends and I go back and continue with, I've created a new organization here called the African Way mm -hmm. and it's composed of those people. And uh, people are becoming interested uh, Eddie Maria is a plant scientist, soil scientist. She's here because of the work that I have tried to do in Portugal on land restoration. Mm -hmm. Well, but curiously, everywhere I start to do something and it starts to show itself, then difficulties and my challenges are not, yeah. People have asked me, but this, ideas you have uh, like are you a millionaire how do you do this how you know how can i see i just see myself as an ambassador of meeting the right people that's my own gift in this world everywhere i go i meet the right people or maybe because i'm looking for them or because they are looking for me or because it's divine i cannot say that it but that's the way I can answer that question because it's complex. My life in Portugal has become, is more complex than I was crying that I went through hell. In, but Europe has taught me <laughs> the lesson of my life. How can you trust people? You can only trust people who still have that belief in themselves that there is some ingenuity. We are all indigenous people mm -hmm. anyway. We are all displaced people. We are all refugees. In fact, we are all going through the trauma. It's not only the earth that we are traumatizing. We are traumatizing ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I start to find this healing by meeting these people and just sharing stories is the first. I don't know of any other healing. Mm -hmm. So I decide these are the kind of people who need to be meeting in a place because people are also homeless at the same time with climate anxiety, job anxiety, also, and they need some kind of space. If you don't have the conditions where you can be at peace with yourself, first come back home to yourself, how can we do restoration, mm. regeneration, without regenerating ourselves? So these are the kind of people that I have found to continue the work. And I think I'm making progress, even though going through all these challenges of organizational matters. Yeah, yesterday, um, Adam Maria flew back from Denmark with this, uh, but I sub stack, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a villager. I've been doing digging the soil. I don't know so much about fundraising. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So if I don't have the kind of team that I had of modern people, then this indigenous and modern coming to that is it's not working mm -hmm. because it has to be a two way bridge. Yeah. No, I mean, I'd, I've noticed that because some, I, I didn't actually, I looked at the word document you sent me. I haven't looked at the other thing because it's yet again, one of those where you have to sign your data away to yet another company to um, just look at a, a piece of information that you may or may not want to look at. But it's complex. It's, yeah, so it, it's, um, and I noticed that the, the wording, like a business plan and that there could be a profit from this, uh, I think this is sacred work and not necessarily something that needs to make a profit because the profit is would be to all of life and all of humanity if what you're trying to do um, and so simply bringing a place where we can do this learning together, where we can meet each other in in the recognition that we're all um, healing our collective story of being traumatized and traumatizing each other. Um, and and I, I, I can see how doing that with depth and creating a space where people can come together who want to work in a 
decolonializing way in Africa, with Africa, to almost reset all the existing assumptions and, and all these deeper layers of even how we understand Africa with its current borders and where those borders come from and and uh, all of that um i think it would be incredibly powerful um so the, the, this uh, tell me if, what is the word nan nandi for what does it mean <laughs> well this is my secret <laughs> because i was initiated in the secret society mm -hmm. it took 10 years of being advisor to the king to convince the king that we should open the secret shrine to foreigners mm -hmm. to accept to be the ambassador to bring this rite of passage the missing link in Western education is the denial of the place of elders. And an elder here, Daniel, is not age. We live in weeks and not in years. Mm -hmm. So at the age of 13, I was an elder. Imagine what that means. The place of eldership is missing. Even icons like you, Daniel, are not accepted as elders. So this is a secret. It takes 10, seven days. As a child at the age of 13, I didn't know that we'll be undertaking a journey. We didn't even have dresses to cover ourselves and we we're moving to the spiritual forest. First rule, silence. You put a leaf between your lips and follow the elders. Whatever the elders, once is the elders, you just follow. Yes to elders. Yeah, that's part of initiation. And in the spiritual forest, now you start to become community, whether you like it or not. Notice that as young well, boys, we were not told where we would get food to eat. We were not, we're not told where we would get water. But the need arises and the solution just came up like that. Group action, that is where work camp started. I just tweaked the right of passage of initiation into work camps. If people are working together towards something, it's magic. That's the power of community, especially around food. Mm -hmm. You have to see these young people there that they are hungry and they need to eat. And they just know where to go to climb the tree and harvest the fruit or to dig this tuba or some have this. Not. How it came about that we survived for seven days, don't ask me. And in the night that you are cold, you just find yourself that you were sleeping packed together in a group. Who ordered that? How did it start? This is, for me, the secret of what we are running away from, mm. that we are kind of one. And that is not love, then I don't know. If you have never had love and care for each other and care for the environment, then you, you haven't become an elder. Mm. This destructive tendency called education is what we have put in. We didn't know that something is called education. We went there for a learning exercise. And yeah. when we sat under the barbab tree and everyone had to look up and the elders didn't even have to say it. For the first time you are silent and seeing a huge thing towering up to whether it's heaven, the skies, and you know that this thing had been here for centuries and that it is right to be called an elder mm -hmm. or to be called an ancestor. And then to come and people are telling you that you are primitive because you believe in a tree or because you believe in a river. This is where our education, this is how we have destroyed the soul of Africa. And I cannot believe that it wasn't the same thing in Europe because I live to see my grandmother tell the story of how all the traditional midwives doing traditional delivery, helping the women and the children, 
They were killed. The, the colonists called them witches and killed them. All the living libraries in Africa have been killed for one reason or the other. And the only reason my head was on the line was because I'm carrying indigenous wisdom. So who is running away from indigeneity? Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's something hidden in the European lineage that as a German, you started to tell the story from the wrongdoings and, and, and the, the effects of German colonialism in Africa. Um, I grew up in Germany. I never felt very strongly German. I, I had a deep connection with the Mediterranean because my, my grandmother had a house here and I spent all my my summers and my holidays um, in this kind of climate zone and, and somehow connected with it. But I do, do have a deep connection also with some of the the deeper stories that come out of Germany and and Goethe the the, the poet scientist 200 years ago um really spoke to exactly what like the education system and the science perspective that objectifies the world that splits the world into supposedly a nature out there and a culture that is somehow separate from it. Um, Goethe warned 200 years ago that we were losing a more direct understanding of the living world as it shows up in us because we are the living world. Um, so so in in already in i mean this is only 200 years ago but they, they, i think that there were still remnants of people speaking to this awareness that she is alive and we live within her we're expressions of her um and i think it would be amazing to to create a space where where that kind of wisdom can be discussed between those Europeans who want to sit around that fire and and uh, people from Africa who can share like there's so much like even if you think yourself not to be racist not to be a colonialist is you it, like you, being European and and having been educated having been subjected to that same crime against humanity that is still going on in so many places and education that rips the world apart through a, a worldview um tell me more about this this vision that you have like the I, the, the, the center nandi for um set, the the farm you you now stay in is, is that still i have used it for for the initiation it's not my farm mm -hmm. i have until july 1st to buy it because my landlord's wife just got an operation of, and it's in a coma of tumor, tumor. And there were some permaculture people, I think a US and a British person who has seen the work that I've done there and they wanted to buy it. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, now I'm in this situation and it's a situation of first come, first safe. Mm -hmm. And this is why um, I was in Denmark to, to meet uh, Laura and this is where we sat around a fire and talked this way. And Ida Maria decided to come and see if she can help. So she asked me, and I told her simply what I've, I've been trying to tell you in many words. But it's simply a healing path for those who want to build some kind of community of practice for caregivers, not stakeholders. Because this is the challenge. If I had a capitalization model of how quick returns, quick returns on investments, then it will happen easily. But I'm not from that world. Mm -hmm. So in my conversation, I just had this hunch to send this thing to you because you are more experienced and uh, would maybe advise because in such critical moments, sometimes I just break down. But in this situation, I'm not even like 
I've just come to the point where when you are a caregiver, you just don't concentrate on care receiving. Mm. We are just interested in healing the crisis and the whatever is possible. Because it's about families, it's about friends. It's maybe hospicing another way of hosting those who could be caregivers. Um, and then for me, it will be a community for all, not based on this particular intention of making the business of eco villages are also businesses. Let's call it that way. I don't want to call it an eco village. Mm. So I have manifested many oases in my life. So I believe if there are people with that compassionate, philanthropic, um, I've been in Tamara. Tamara is a German community based in Portugal. Mm. When I grew up and the stories, the horror stories of how they would remove their spectacles and put and say, my eyes are watching and you have to walk and die, you know, even if blood is coming out, you have to keep, because the master is walking and they can actually whip you to death. But see who is helping me, the Germans. Should I hate the Germans? Look at the Bafut Palace, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Center. Even if the world, the French don't want it to, to function anymore. The greatest heritage of colonization is the fort. That's where the German army was stationed. And the palace that they rebuilt, when they couldn't defeat us as a people, they signed a pact of friendship. And with German technology, they constructed a palace that is a UNESCO World Heritage Center. So every adversity can be turned into an oasis of, I will call it prosperity for youth. For me, that's how we build a future. And there are people in this world with that kind of heart. It's not about my personal, I no longer have any reason just like I said to the UK people, don't give me a scholarship, give it to the young person. We need a place where the young people who are looking for this path, that some people can think about it instead of giving them the thing that is driving them to jump over the bridge. When I was in the UK, I saw young people jumping in front of the train. Um, and we, we cannot continue to hide that we are destroying the very future that we, we claim that we are restoring or regenerating. So it's difficult, yes, for people to think that the, the well, should an African be, I don't even like the word help, it's like it. It's like, can we work together with Africa? Is there anything in Africa that can be useful in informing the new kind of education? Because it's about education. And it's not experiential because I am an indigenous person. I've grown up through handed down fireside storytelling. My education in the spiritual forest was stories. So I'm not scientific. I cannot build those mechanisms, the structures for the big monies. It's only through friends who maybe know how through commit, commitment and cultivating for something that we really believe in. Then if it's about a pretext, I'm really tired. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it feels very fast. July is very soon. Um, is the is the land itself? Have you connected so deeply with the land that you feel that it, that this land itself is is critical to the vision? Or um... well, I said I built oasis. I did something in Tamara. I've done something for the biggest landowner in Portugal. You know, and I still move on. This has been my life. 
So I'm not attached to anything per se. I should, I'm sure it even reflects in that plan. Mm -hmm. What I know is that what I've done there, I can still do somewhere else. And uh, I believe that it is fast. One of the things the two ladies out there are discussing is how could they find somebody? Because one of my friends in the UK who created the Ndani for Gardens UK Trust came also down and pledged that he would put part of the money. I don't know whether three, whether about 30%, but he would not put all the money. But he cannot also put up the money such that, because they too are trying to do fundraising and then they could repay because this land is ideal for spiritual retreat. I've been to Plum Village. There's connection there. There's connection with the Conscious Food Alliance for it becoming the one of the social herbs. But it's not, who knows? It's not the only place that I can say. It's whether, of course, this idea is a good idea. What I have, what I bring. So, I can just surrender and say, well, people haven't. I didn't come to Europe believing that I would survive. I, but now I've created a consultancy because people have told me you, your gifts are useful for Europe. But how to use this? I need the advice of experienced people like you, Danny. We haven't really had an occasion to. I, I look at the, the icons of the people out there, the players, and who, how can I uh, even ask Laura Storm if she could talk to you on my behalf, or whoever, because we don't really know each other. I've talked to Benjamin for, I've talked to people about you, Danny, but I, I, we don't know each other. But I've been following a bit. You've done all the interviews you did. I was in Schumacher College. We watched the stuff that you did there with Satish. So I've been following your work, but then you were up there. So when you said we should have, I just said, well, I, what, I don't know what we have to say, and I don't need to know, but yeah, let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I, I'm so glad we had this conversation. Um, because it also, there's a number of people that I could would like to just share the conversation with. To to some of them you might know already. I don't know, um, but so much of what you, we talked about and what your intention for this place is um, resonates with conversations I've had with other people who really want to support that kind of initiative. So hope hopefully that that would um come to something in the in the same way as as you said like it's there there is something about the universe working through us the life working through us but things things happen um for a reason and my personal story is so much one of of having become a father late in life that i'm i'm very focused on something quite small um but deeply important where I'm relearning family and community and what your wise mother said, um, sticking my hands into the soil and working just a small piece of this beautiful planet and being taught so much by the plants I plant and the trees I care for. And also so much of what, what is at the heart of what I hear you say is is this this shift towards care, being caretakers, being custodians, and 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 that is at the heart of a lot of the regional local work I I do here on Mallorca with with friends and organizations, um, trying to rekindle people's love for place, people's care for place, people's understanding of place and each other. Um, and the commitment to that means that I can't really commit to many projects elsewhere in a in in a big way um as as deeply as it sometimes feels um, yeah that said i i would love to support in whatever way i can and, and let's have another conversation maybe one that we don't record where we can just talk about sort of practical things of how i can can help um 
but I would hope that just sharing this conversation with a few people and and sharing it online that will will create maybe some people reaching out to you, um, offering help. And I'm I'm also thinking of a couple of people in particular. But let's let's have another conversation to talk through through those people. Um, I just I'm just really grateful. Uh, yes, we don't know each other so, so well. I've also been following your work and and I just I, I, I remember the spark, what, what you just alluded to earlier, that the thought that there are more than one Sunita, that there are actually hundreds of Sunitas that you have given an opportunity to become elders, become leaders um, in wherever they're going to be, they're going to fall on their feet and be of service to life. And for that, I just deeply um, respect you and 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 feel feel honored to have had this conversation. And and I think we we are in the same. Um, no, actually, I wouldn't even presume to put myself into the same category there because I I think you're teaching me something that that my daughter is also teaching me that I have spent too much time looking at the conversations of the adults and the already in the mental space in the analytical space um people doing masters or phds or being out there in business but the real powerful work is um working with the young people and working with especially the young generation that is come come out of this education system and, and clearly sees that what they've learned is enough service to the world in in the way that they've learned it so yeah i i I will reflect deeply and and let's let's have another conversation soon. Um, thank you so much for making the time, and and thank you for being who you are. The pleasure is mine, Daniel. I was curious to know you, and I feel like we are connected on one thing. Small is beautiful. Mm -hmm. This is the lesson of life, yeah. and I love just what I said about family and friends and the community of the plants and the water bodies and understanding exactly who we are. So this is what I take home. It really touches my heart that you say you're going to talk, talk with some people. I didn't know you had that in mind. So I'm very grateful. Mm. I am grateful. And I, because I'm so stuck to this place i hope that one day you will come and visit um you're definitely welcome and it would be lovely to to host you here and maybe here yeah and actually been planning a visit to mayuka to i have a friend who is doing biochar christoph krista soderberg ah i know krista well, he, yeah. he's been inviting me i offered to come this time because i was secretly hoping that i would get to meet daniel <laughs> <laughs> because I, he told me you you said about you we you are you're in mayuka yeah, I will, yeah. I will I'll chat to Krista about it. Um, it'd be lovely. Let's let's make that happen okay. some, sometime soon. Lots of love. Thank you. Have a wonderful, good luck with Video, it. a beautiful family. Yeah, and, and trust, like there are some people are wanting to bring me to Portugal, to, to Lisbon. Um, when was it? I think it, sometime in January. So I'll, I'll definitely keep you posted as soon as I know details. Yeah. Okay, Daniel. Okay, wonderful. wonderful. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.